When we previously made my cup of coffee from scratch, I received some criticism for the method I used for brewing. So I thought I'd check back with Jackson, who taught me about brewing, and see what I could have done better. So I'm back here with Jackson from Peace Coffee. So I took something you said a little literally and attempted to make my own coffee using the sock method. So I kind of wanted to come back and see if I, did I really ruin my coffee or was, what could I have done better? I think that you were basically using the proper, you know, brewing channels. You saturated the water, you ground it fresh, you uh, filtered it using the sock. Uh, but we're just going to refine it ever so slightly in order to make the coffee a little bit clearer. You did the, mostly the right thing, like I said. So we're going to start out with your coffee. So one handful right there, that's going into the mortar and pestle. We're looking for grounds that are roughly the size of breadcrumbs. We're basically going to be doing kind of a French press style grind. This seems to work pretty effectively. Mm -hmm. When I did with mine, I just used a mallet and the sock mm -hmm. and that. That was a lot of work. <laughs> this is how people would grind their coffee in the uh, 16th, 17th centuries. This is about how evenly you could grind your coffee before mechanized grinders and electrical equipment started coming into place. So that's pretty dang coarse right there. So before we end up brewing anything, first off we want to make sure everything's at the proper temperature. I've got my mug that I'm going to be drinking out of and I've got my measuring cup that I'm actually going to brew the coffee in. I want to make, and I've got my sock that I'm going to use as a filter. And all of these I'm just going to heat up. This is just freshly off-boil water. I'm just going to pour some water into each of these so that all of them are nice and hot. So rinsing the sock first is going to make sure that it's going to filter out all the coffee and it's not going to absorb any of the coffee brew. So I've got my coffee grounds here. I'm going to set that for five minutes. I'm going to start it and I'm going to hit this with about 10 fluid ounces of water, one and a quarter cup. Now we sit and we wait. So when I did mine, I put the beans in the sock and poured the water over. So this method is better than it. Conceivably, yeah. Well, you would end up with uh, a little bit more extraction the way you did it. Uh, same kind of thing. It's just that when you take it out, uh, there's more uh, range for the uh, coffee to filter through it. You might end up with some gris gristle and grit in there. By doing things this way with two vessels, uh, a lot of that gristle and grit is going to end up settling to the bottom of this and not end up in our cup. It's all going to be just dissolved solids. It's going to be really nice and clean. Okay. So, take the spoon. Okay. Uh, get your face like as close to that as possible and just break that crust and uh, smell it as you do so. Mmm. Strong. That is one of my favorite uh, aspects of any kind of coffee thing is that moment of breaking the crust yeah. uh, on a cupping cup because the aroma is just like waft right into your face and it's very, very potent. We're just going to skim that stuff right off the top with the spoons. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're just going to do is let that settle for another uh, couple minutes, let the remaining things uh, float down to the bottom. We're going to pour it through this filter here. This is just like I said, a sock basically. Uh, and we're going to end up with a super clean, hopefully really well extracted cup of coffee. So okay, this is uh, sat for long enough, I think. I'm going to pour this in here. We've still got a few things floating up at the top, but you can see the vast majority of those grounds settled at the bottom. It's pretty clean. Color is a little light. We probably could have ground that a little bit finer. So if I were to do that again, I'd just uh, grind that a little bit finer. But definitely the grit and gristle factor, because you can see how slowly it's filtering through there. If this were full of grounds, uh, this would take forever. And so by letting the settling action do most of the filtering for us, it happens a little bit faster and we end up with more of our actual coffee liquid in. You literally set a sock. I can brew you a good cup of coffee using uh, the cheapest like piece of stovetop cookware yeah. and a sock as a filter. Did you literally mean a sock? I, I literally meant like a cloth bag of some kind. I mean, a sock yeah. will do the, the trick. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to use a sock because I happen to have this cloth filter around. Um, if I was in dire straits, yeah, I would get myself an actual sock. Maybe I'd get one, uh, wash it once and not wear it just because yeah. I'm, I'm afraid of <laughs> feet contamination. <laughs> but uh, basically, yeah. Are certain types of socks better than other? Probably something 100% cotton, uh, something with a real tight knit to it. Um, not necessarily like a coarsely woven wool sock or something like that because that's going to let more of the particles through. Yeah. Uh, just something that will trap as much of the uh, actual solid particles, but let the, uh, the moisture through as much as possible. Okay. Tastes like coffee. Real clean, real nice, real smooth. Yeah, turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. A lot of mixture of different flavors, but overall it seems a lot cleaner. I think I, had a, I definitely had a lot more uh, soot or other random stuff that had gotten through the sock. So it definitely seems a lot cleaner taste to it than what I got with my dirty sock. Thanks to Jackson at Peace Coffee. Now know some new tips for making your own primitive coffee. 
So I think next time it'll turn out a little bit better.